Gina K has a fantastic new bundle out today, and I can't wait to show you the card I created. Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and my studio. Today's project is a little long, so I'm not gonna talk a lot here. Suffice to say, the bundle's awesome, and that card project is coming up next. Here's a look at the new bundle from Gina K Designs, and this is called Fancy Florals. As opposed to kits, which tend to be a little bigger, bundles are smaller and have some more focused products. So you are going to get this Fancy Florals stencil for adding your color and the dies. I love these because I love watching Gina do the florals and stencil and add the color and mm, yeah, love it. You're also gonna get this fun little greeting set and what's great about this, it's very all-purpose, happy for you, happy birthday, like very all-purpose greetings that we reach for a lot. And you get dies to cut them out, these big three. So that's fun. And there's an art stencil. So you get two patterns in the stencil. And if you wanted to fill a whole panel, these are actually really easy to build out just by lining them up. I'm probably just going to create some sort of grounding today, but you know, who knows? So. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to cut out my shapes with the dies first before I start stenciling. So let me do that off camera and then we'll start adding some color. Just wanted to show you, I'm putting all of these through my Empress die cut machine at the same time. I'm not sure how much of it I'm going to use, but you can use the stencil to color in these other blooms as well. So we'll see, I may only do one and a couple extra leaves, but let's go ahead and get those cut out. I'm gonna use my grip mat. This is actually one that I cut down. Uh, I wanted to have a strip to use for something else and I did a really crappy job. I think this is the, what is this one? The five and a half by eight and a half. But so any sticky surface though will work or you can just put a little removable adhesive on the back to hold this down on a piece of scratch paper. But I thought I wanna try it with the grip mat because you know this thing is great and it will hold my stencil in place. And so what you have here is you have four stencils and I think I'm going to start with, and actually I gotta pop some of these out here. If you ever if you ever have a piece in your stencil that is still stuck in, just pop it out like that. Sometimes they come with a little extra and that is good to go. So this looks like more of the detail and this one looks more, this is layer one and layer two. I feel like I might do, I might do my layer, this one first, cause I kind of want to see exactly how this is going to fit in. And here's why it's fun to do it on the die cut. Cause then you can position it so that you are right where you need to be. And I'm just looking, looking, coming up a little and press. Now, the beautiful thing about the grip mat, it is sealing it in, and that is not moving anywhere, right? It just sucks it down. Oh, I love that. Saving on tape. So let me grab some inks so I can start blending, because I'm not 100% sure what I'm doing yet. I'll grab inks and we'll begin. I'm going to start with light carnation, and then I'm going to use the dark carnation, I think, for some detail. Or I may do medium, I haven't decided yet, but I don't necessarily need to have blooms be all in different colors. I know sometimes people get really crafty and I love that, but what I usually do anytime I get something new is I always start out pretty simply. So again, this is held into place beautifully. If you wanted to do these in different colors, all you'd need to do is just mask off, right? So I'm gonna do a little darker at the base of these blooms and then just come up a little. And, and honestly, well, yeah, you'd have to mask a little, but I am not going to worry about that because everything is going to be in this color. Ooh, but I do like that. I like the look of that. All right. I may not even do the other blooms that I die cut, but I know that I can. I just love the single bloom and how it all comes together and how I don't have to worry about die cutting, you know, cause this is going to look wonderful. 
Yeah, I think I'm gonna grab the medium carnation for the next layer. All right, I'm gonna lift this up and you can see the first layer of color and how soft and pretty that looks. Isn't that nice? Now to clean this off, I'll just spritz on some alcohol and wipe it down because that's a great way to clean your stencils. I keep mine in a little bottle here and I just spritz it on. I'll show you real quick. I'll just do it over here and wipe it down with a cloth. Also, I hope you can't hear my neighbor. He's going crazy right now with his leaf blower. And um, that's, that's, what, that's what some Minnesotans do. My husband is not a leaf blower. God love him for that. Okay, moving on. I've already got medium carnation and we're gonna come in here now and fill in this part of the flower. So you can see again, all you have to do is make sure that stencil is framed out on your die cut. Now, let's... Sometimes it's easier for me to stand up and look, but today I'm just gonna keep my big old noggin out of the way. And I think that looks great. That's what's so great is you've got that see-through aspect, right? So you know you're gonna be nicely lined up. Now, I am not going to change brushes because we're going into a darker color. This is the medium carnation. And sometimes I tap off to get ink off, but also to push it into the bristles a little so it's more distributed. And then we're gonna bring in this, although you know what, I can go darker with this one. There we go, a little darker at the bases, a little lighter out. Same thing here, darker at that base. And then just kind of soften it out. However you wanna put it on. You could use the smaller blending brushes as well. I really do tend to just stick with regular size brushes most of the time, you know, cause you can kind of point it down a little as you go. I'll come up here like that. So we are doing a monochromatic bloom, but these will definitely have at least a little tonal variation, right? Come on up. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, I love a monochromatic palette. Look how pretty that is. All right, let me clean this and grab some green inks. I'm gonna go with the spruces. So we're gonna start with a light spruce. But I just wanted to show you, if you've never done this or if you've never seen me on channel before, the only way I ever clean my brushes is to take a paper towel that I keep on a roller under my desk. It's getting down there. And just go over until most of that color is off if you don't want that. Because I just do one brush per color. I don't have, you know, brushes for light greens or dark greens. And this is such an easy way to just get your brush cleaned off of the ink that you last used. Plus it kind of primes it. So, yeah, don't bother washing them. I, oh, wait, wrong way. I used to wash them. <laughs> oh, I've learned so much. Okay. So we're gonna start with the light spruce. This is a really nice green. And again, I'm gonna tap some of this so it really gets into the bristles. Okay, and we're gonna come up. So this is soft and I love the look of this on any greenery because it's just more of a, I don't know, it's dusty. I think the spruces have more of a dusty feel, especially when they dry. And again, I'm trying to do you know, a little at the base and then just kind of swoosh it up a bit. That's where a smaller brush can help. But like I said, I just kind of tip my brush up like that. All right, easy peasy breezy. Now we'll move on to the final stencil, which is the medium spruce. And I will clean this up real quick and get the other one in position. Well, first I'll show you because it's just so cute. Look at that. Oh, love it. I just realized that these are buds. <laughs> so I'm like, wait a minute. We're not going to put more green on there. We are going to put bud color on there. So let me get these lined up because those are little friends that haven't come out yet. Oh, that's so cute. All right. How do I want to get you nicely lined up? Look through that stencil and press. Oh, so should I go, you know what? I should go darker. I mean, I should go with a darker color of pink. So let maybe this is where we bring in 
the darker bud color because aren't they kind of dark and then they open up and you see all the light? Well, either way, that's what I'm gonna do. I'll bring in dark carnation. I didn't even see those as buds. I love that. Oh, that's so fun. Okay, going like this, getting it into the bristles there and we'll just go like this. Little buds. Oh, it's gonna be so pretty. All right, darker at the bases and soften it out. Buds, it's so cute. Okay, maybe a little more, bring that in. I'm telling you stencils are my favorite way to color because they make you look good. And it's, I don't wanna say it's completely foolproof because I've made mistakes with stenciling before, but most of the time, it just comes out so nicely and yeah, it's it's a fun, quick and really precise way to add color. And it's a great way to get your ink blending sea legs, if you will. If you're not sure, like, oh, I can't get those blends. You just sort of play until it looks acceptable. And now I'll lift this up and show you my buds. Oh yeah, that's what we needed. We just needed buds. All right, now we're moving on. Just wanted to show you how pretty that looks, right? And that I can set aside for now. But also I wanted to show you, and here's where I will take water when it's time to sort of wipe the grip mat off. But most of the time you're not getting much on. The stain that you see is just from other inks that I've used. And then if you want to do with the others, these little guys, uh, you can just, well, let's, let's show you one. You can stick one down, figure out where the stencil goes. I can do this. I'm a highly trained professional. Oh, it's that. I like that. So, you know, I can go in and do these individually, which is nice if you want to have like an, a separate bloom, you know? But now here, because I just used that really dark color, I'd have to give it a little, little lick and a promise and then go back to my other colors. So if I wanted to have an extra bloom, you take the individual die cut and I wouldn't do them both at the same time just cause you know what, why, why? just do this. Right, get your first layer down like that. And press, that should be good. And then bring in that medium carnation. So that's how you would do the individual die cuts. And again, I just think it's easier to cut them out like Gina does. Ooh, I'm making this one fairly dark. Let's have some fun with that. Let's just create some variation. There you go, lift it up. One bloom done. You could do as many as you want. It could be fun too to have a couple extra on. Where's my little pokey lifter? Never lift with the jewels, only the tools, right? So, you know, you could layer another one back in here, have more greenery, whatever, whatever floats your boat. All right. And I think I actually will do one more. And again, pop it down. Okay, just takes a second. And I find too that once you do it a few times, you can kind of figure it out, right? You could even mark on your stencil itself. I never, I never put little marks on, but kind of love it. All right, back to the light carnation and another flower. And of course, these inks always just dry back beautifully. They have a smoothing agent and they dry back like a buttery smooth airbrushed goodness all right so there's that now and we have this friend so that will go right there all right and then this goes right over like that as many as you like okay i'll take my darker color here just blend it on. All right, now I have two more blooms that I can use to fill out. And then I can also make more smaller blooms as well with the buds by using 
the leaf portions on here as well. I'm gonna do a couple of those off camera and then we're going to stamp a greeting. For the greeting, this is what I often do. I'm gonna stamp all of them. <laughs> just decide which one looks best. And if they all look great, well then bonus, I have an extra greeting, I'll do that one that way, that I can keep for future cards. And I do keep them. I have a little, I have a couple little areas where I just stash extra greetings. And this is also on Gina's Heavy Base Weight cardstock, the white, because I like my greetings to feel nice and sturdy. I have my grit mat in my Misty, and I usually wash my grit mat with soapy water, like dish soap, once a week and just let it air dry and it just gets as sticky as can be. All right, I'm going to use some anti-static powder. This is from Simon Says Stamp. And this is just so that where I stamp is where my embossing powder is going to stick beautifully. And this is also why you have to kind of wash these grit mats because if you use anti-static powder over time, it, it gets on your mat and then your mat is less sticky. I'm going to use Versamark ink today. This is the clear embossing ink. My pad is a little dry and I like that for these more detailed stamps with the little flourishes. I think this is going to look great. All right, I'm going to transfer, not press too hard, but just run my little Stampin' Bug over. And I think I'll give it one more hit here. That and press. And then we can, you don't, I don't want to squish that because that is so delicate. I'll let that transfer. And now we'll add our gold powder. Let's add our Gina K Designs Fine Detail Gold Embossing Powder and see how it looks. The other thing about Gina's cardstock, this um, heavy base weight and the layering weight actually, it's a very smooth cardstock. Oh, I missed completely. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, I guess, we, I guess I didn't press hard enough. All right. That, my friends, is on me. I did not press hard enough at the top of my tool. So we're gonna go sending hugs. You know what I like to say, here on my channel, we keep the mistakes because it's no big deal. All right, I'm gonna just get rid of these. It's a shame too, because I mean, <laughs> the parts that did are so good. But here, now, I'm gonna go ahead and get the coordinating die for this. All right, I have the coordinating die. Let's run it through. And if this doesn't work, we'll have to do it all again. Okay. Now, I could have gotten a little more technical here with a template, but I think that this is going to look, oh, that looks great. Isn't that cute? Look how delicate it is. And it cuts out the open space. I'm gonna go ahead and cut out another one of these. And I think I'm going to cut out another, maybe another one of these just to have a little more dimension to both of my pieces. All right, I'll cut those out and we'll glue them together. I have to show you this cute little magnet sheets that I bought from Tailored Expressions. I think she has other sizes, but this is just an old piece of magnetic paper from an old die set that I just got rid of. And you can use that just to keep your dies separated. A lot of, uh, sometimes when you have Gina's, they do come with the backers. This one, the bundle I have did not. So I just use this for keeping them together when I have them all in. And I will store them all in one big pocket because then I know where everything is. And when I wanna do the whole thing at once, right? They're all there. So I'm just gonna add a little connect glue to the second layer of this die cut. And again, it's just to give it a little more dimension. And I'll do that for the large little bloom as well. Still, I'm not sure what the design's gonna be. And that is the fun of card making. You make things and then you figure out how they go together. All right, so we're gonna line that up, get it nicely centered and good to go. And I will just put a brick on this and I'll go ahead and glue these together as well. So we have our pieces. I'm, I don't think I'm using the extra florals, but I do want to use the stencil. So I have an idea here. I'm going to score a note card. This is also the heavy 
weight, heavy base weight cardstock. And I think before I fold it, I might get out. I, I feel like I'm going all in today. I pulled some soft stone. I am going to grab some masking magic strips. I got an idea. Okay, for my stencil, here's what I want to do. I am going to, and forgive my head, it's probably going to get in the way here. I'm going to put a little mask at the top. And I'm using the masking magic. These are the quarter inch strips, or no, half inch strips, sorry. I'm getting right on the edge of the paper. And I'm going to put them all the way around my little area. What I want to try to do is put down my stencil and I'm going to put it right here, line it up against that, and I'm going to tape it into place. I've got a magnet here, but I'm just going to go like that, like that. Then I don't want to waste masking magic for this, but sometimes you spare the rod and spoil the adhesive. I don't know if that's a saying, but we're going to do that. And we're going to take this little piece up top and we're just going to protect. I think that's enough. Oh yeah, that is. Now I want to create a continuing background. Will I be able to do it? Well, let's see. Soft stone, beautiful color. I've seen Gina use this a lot. And what I would like to do is have a very gentle soft stone background. but not have a hard edge. So I think in order, there's my hair. I think in order to do this, I'm gonna just have to kinda come in and out and in and out. Now it doesn't look like much right now. The main thing I wanna focus on are these edges, right? Because that's gonna frame what I'm doing. But I want it to be more irregular. Here goes nothing, so that when I pick it up, off of here, see how soft that is? That I can come over, right? And all I have to do, technically, let's, uh, we're, we're at the base here. We're gonna come and we're gonna come back over this space. So while I was very light, now I can bring it and continue it over from the other side in. But again, I'm going to want to take that and protect this. So it's going to be really soft. I, I think if you, you know, were playing around with it a little more, right? But it's just a way to join the stencil to make it bigger. Now I got that a little dark in there. So let's, let's just do that. All right. A little darker on the edge. Didn't really want to be that dark down there. But now you just come in. To where you were and we're not going to go all the way so we're not going to have any really hard lines i think and that way when i lift this up technically let me lift the one from one side we should see oh, i did it i created it all the way across now it's soft right but here's another thing you can do with, well, let's put this up here, with what's left on my brush, just go a little darker here in the corners, like that. And that's gonna just give it a little more definition. And I'll do that all the way around, like that. So it's just a subtle pattern that I picked up, more or less. Looks pretty good. This will dry beautifully, and that's a way you can easily line up the stencil pattern, right? All right, let's see what it looks like. And, you know, I can save this masking magic for another use as long as I'm in a similar color. Sometimes I say, I kind of been in a phase right now where I am using a lot of masking magic, which, well, it feels pretty good. <laughs> so pick you up. This one I don't think I will use again. This one I might. Okay, where am I? Here we go. But now what you can see is I have this really nicely masked grounding area on my note card. And even though I got a little heavy down there, I think I think it's going to be pretty 
and I'm going to fold this up and we're going to continue. Fold that down and I'm just going to give this a nice press with my Teflon bone folder and now we can start assembling the card. I know this is going on a little long, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put a little gold on here because of the gold greeting. And I think that would be kind of fun to warm it up. So I'm going to use the aqua pigment from Brutus Monroe in the Gilded. Just put a little down here. I'm going to grab this little brush because I've kind of been going back and forth between fan brush and this brush because check it out. It's just, it's a really fun little way to just do quick spatters on your card. Okay. Drop, 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 drop. You don't need much, right? And what's going to happen is when this dries, it's going to have a beautiful shine. So you just, you know, just put a few on, especially in the margin. That's pretty. All right. I'm going to let that dry and then we'll build our card. So I've got some foam squares on the back of this. And I think that once I get them off, I am going to use just a few of the extra leaves to sort of fill this out a little. And I do think having that little bit of spatter is gonna be so pretty now that it's dry. But these are thin foam squares. I didn't want to have a lot of loft considering that I already doubled up on my die cut here. However, I want to put a little bit of my Connect Glue just on the back here so that I have a tiny float time. I put a little bead on each foam square. It just gives you this seconds long cushion or you know, maybe not even seconds. But that way I would like to have a little bit of this greed or the bloom just popping out into that margin like that right there okay actually you know what'd be cute what if i put the greeting up there i wasn't even thinking about that i might but here now i can take this little leaf and i think i'm just gonna like sandwich it in here if i can yeah i can totally do that all right, get a little guy here and or up here. What I want to do it up there. Oh, that's cute too. That's just going to give my bloom a little dimension. I can do the bigger one. I don't know if it will fit though. I might have to cut it. Let's see. Actually, that's not bad. Although that would probably change the greeting because if I had that there. Yeah, my, my intention was to put the greeting down here. So I'm not sure about that guy, but I kind of like it up here too. That's odd because I never, yeah, no, I'm not going to do it up there. You know, you got to think. You got to put the, the thinking caps on, figure out where you're going. I'm going to slide you right in there just for a little extra, right? Maybe like that, a little liquid glue. I think a smaller one would be cute there, but we're going to use what we have. Or would it be not? No, no. I like to keep them together and right like that. Push that right in there. All right. So now I have my bloom. I have my little shine here and we're going to pop this. I think I will put some foam squares on the back here too. All right. There's a lot that's gone into this, but you know what? Sometimes when you get something new, it is fun to kind of play with as many of the things as you can, right? And that's what we're doing today. I'm making a really nice little card all from this bundle. And again, you know, anytime you change up your colors and it, you have a completely different design, but I think I am going to just sandwich that right in the middle of that area here. So the swooping down of the hugs is right between the two lower blooms like that. So we have sending hugs right in the center. Now I don't usually do that. I don't usually put things in the center of a bloom, but let me throw on some pearls and we'll finish this out. All right, I've got some gold foil pearls and I've got five here, a nice little odd number. So I'm just gonna glue these on to finish the card. Boop. Little boop and a little bit larger of one. Pick that up and 
This feels really fancy. <laughs> Is it me? This feels really fancy. Pick, pick you up. Come on now. Boop. And one more right there. To finish this out and boop. And that's my finished card project. So look at that. There, there is a lot going on here. I made my beautiful bloom. I layered in a few extra leaves. I used the stencil to make that pretty grounding background. And then we have our little, little spatter there, which amplifies and picks up and makes a visual connection to the gold elements. I love how that turned out. Fun, fun bundle, Gina. Thank you so much. You can find links to this bundle and all the other products that I used in today's video in the YouTube description box. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, I'd love to have you. So hit that subscribe button and don't forget the notification bell as well so that you don't miss the next time I post. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day. To see a few more cards featuring products from Gina K Designs, check out the two thumbnails I have linked for you below and I'll see you in those videos.